Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this opportunity to be here. Those of you that are connected, God bless you. We are going to go straight to the word of God for today. And I want you to know that God is still doing miracles. God is still in the attitude of doing miracles. There is still something that God does that no man can do. There is still something that is done by the power of God that not even anything can be able to comprehend. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to believe God today because there is a miracle coming your way. The Bible says the entrance of the word bringeth life and understanding to the simple. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Let the word that we shall hear and speak now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're going to talk about the power of unity. Unity is something that when we have it, it gives us every other ability that we don't have. When we are united with ourselves, it starts to create what we cannot do for ourselves. The power of unity is so powerful that God himself operates in that prison. When God operates, God operates in unity. Because God cannot break his own rank. Hallelujah. The power of unity is so good that even the Bible says that in unity the Lord commands his blessings. Wherever there is unity of one purpose, unity of one mind, unity of one language, unity of one heart, unity of one agreement or vision, there is always blessing. Blessing can never be eluded there. People that are in unity in themselves, they always prosper. So I'm telling you this is the greatest secret of advancement and prosperity is when you are united with your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen. When your body is in agreement with your soul and your soul is in agreement with your spirit, there is nothing you cannot achieve. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are going to go straight to the Bible in the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 11. I, I, I spoke about this sometime this weekend. I was in a program of ministers and we were trying to rob minds of what God is going to do this year and where we are going. And I had an opportunity of ministering and I talked about the power of unity. I can feel the aura of God. There was so much presence in that house. And I know that today, God will still visit you in that same, the same way he visited us. The same way God visited the children of God in the book of Genesis chapter 11. The same way God visited the apostles in the book of Acts. God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be a divinity visitation to humanity in your life. And not just visiting you to chastise you, but visiting you to... Uh, to, to advance you. Yes. God shall visit you to prosper you. Amen. God shall visit you to guide you, to protect you. Yes. God will visit you to fight for you. God will visit you to bring success in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. God will visit you to bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go straight to the Bible. Genesis chapter 11, we are reading from verse 1, but I'm just going to read a couple of them. And we move forward. The Bible says, now the whole world, are you there? Hallelujah. If you are there, just say, I am there. It says, now the whole world had one language. I'm talking about oneness, being in unity. 
the whole world had one language. And I want you to look further. He said, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east uh, that they found a plain in the land of Sinai and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make brick and let us make brick and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stones and they had asphalt for mortars. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city. And the tower will stop is in the heavens. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, I want you to see something now. These are men talking. Humanity begin to operate in the class of God. Begin to operate in the, in the way God operates. But God began to do something. The Bible says in verse 5, and, But the Lord came down to see. God did not send an angel. When you are in unity, you see God by yourself. The Bible says, And the Lord came down to see the city. And the tower which the son of Ben had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are what? One. And they have one language. And this is what they had begun to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Have you seen it? Nothing. God said nothing. Not even anything that they propose to do. I'm telling you, they said, key that when you begin to use to operate in your life, demonic oppression will be a thing of the past. Right. You, I'm telling you, demons understand spiritual ramifications. They understand mm -hmm. spiritual ranks. They understand hierarchy. Mm -hmm. They understand the, 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 the way God set the heavens and the earth. Yeah. There are some things they don't operate in it. When they see unity, they run for their life because even God could not stop this man. The Bible says, God said, and nothing that they propose in their heart to do shall be withheld from them. Mm. And God was threatened for the first time. God was threatened about men. God was threatened in his mighty and power for the first time in the Bible. For the first and the last time, the Bible said, come, let us go down. And they confused their language mm. that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they ceased building the city. Therefore, it is named its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused their language of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad all over the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So this is self-explanatory but I'm going to try to put some kind of um, a, a, a expansion and a, 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 um, uh, try to dissect it a little bit. But if you have followed us as we read this, uh, the Bible said the son of man began to build something. They began to do something. It can be anything. It can be a business. It can be a marriage. It can be a family. It can be a church. It can be a, a, a job that you begin to build. Everything that we do, we build it. We, we, we start from the scratch. We start to put things. Uh, they say, let us build something. Let us make something. Let us make a name for ourselves. Even if we scatter, we shall still have something to be remembered. <laughs> Even though they never completed it, but this became a memorial. Hallelujah. The Bible said, they said, let us bring bricks. And everybody had the same language. Everybody had the same vision. Everybody was focused on the same thing. They were all in one accord. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time your spirit, your soul, your body is in one accord, the devil cannot stop you, cannot withheld you. I don't care we're standing with you. Many times we want a lot of people to be with us before we start to do something. You just have to believe in yourself and let your spirit and your body agree. If there's an agreement within you, then there is nothing. I say nothing. Because every man that you see is treon. The Bible says God is Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God created man in his image and his likeness. Man is trion also. Man had the spirit, the soul, and the body. And if your soul and your spirit and your body can be in agreement, huh? I'm telling you that you are three. Oh, come on. There is nothing that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then if you extend yourself in agreement with somebody else, hmm. and their spirit, their soul, and their body, uh, it's in agreement with your spirit, your soul, and your body. That is where you begin to go compounding. Mm. The Bible says, if two shall agree touching anything, the Bible did not say ten. Two mm. shall agree touching anything here on earth. It shall be where established in heaven. The power of unity. And this man agreed. And they began to build. I don't know what you have agreed in January, and maybe February is going down now. You are beginning to disagree. But let me tell you something. Don't disagree yet. Yes, sir. Begin to continue to hold on to that word. 
that proposal that you have written down, that business assignment, whatever it is, that marriage proposal that you say, I'm going to be married this year, I'm going to stay married, or that renewal of vow that you have made, God, I'm going to be in the kingdom, I'm going to serve you, whatsoever that you have proposed in your spirit, and your soul has been in agreement, and your body is also agreeing with you, let me tell you something, there is nothing the devil can do about that. Or you, can't, you don't even worry about the devil there. Oh, because when you do this kind of thing, the devil will stay away. There are some places the devil don't go. There are some things that the devil don't attack. Let me tell you, the only places that the devil attack is where there is no organization. The Bible says God is an organized God. Yes, sir. God is what? An organized God. God can never be disorganized. If you are organized this year, there's no way. If you are united in your spirit, your soul, and your body, if you are united in your family, oh, come on. If you, that, That's why I tell people, I say many, many times, the prayer of a husband and a wife, that is are in agreement. Yes, sir. It's more powerful than the prayer of a whole church. Yes, sir. And sometimes people can say, "What is this? Is this blasphemy?" No, because the, the, the church is an extension of a family. Yes, sir. God began the fellowship with man, and by the time the Bible says God fellowship with Adam every day, Adam and Eve were in agreement. But until they begin to disagree, the devil could not come in. At the base of the day, God will come and fellowship with the man. So if a husband and a wife can be in agreement in the spirit, in the soul, and their body concerning any project that they are going to embark on, let me tell you something. The devil cannot stop you. Yes. Then when you start to add your, their family with another family, hmm. and that family add with another family, yes. oh, that is, we're talking about compounding now. Everything will begin to metamorphose Hallelujah. by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. These guys began to build a tower that will reach to the tops of the heavens. And the Bible says, and they began to build. They did not just think about it. They did not just say it. They began to do something. They began to burn bricks and bring mortars. And they began to put bricks together. And the tower began to rise. The tower began to rise. And for the first time, God said, let us go and see the city that the Son of Man are building. And God came down from heaven and saw. God said, these people are one. Ha! These people are what? God said what? These people are one. They have, indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. Do you have one language, even to yourself? Many times our spirit is saying something, our body is saying no. Because we cannot agree. The Bible says two cannot be together unless yeah. they agree. Yeah. When there is an agreement, they, I'm telling you, even the enemy cannot disagree with you. Yes, yeah, sir. You are, the devil will help you carry your back. The devil will help you get to your destiny. Because you are in agreement with yourself. That's right. Haven't you oh, seen where yeah. somebody is walking in their place of purpose and you see all your enemies and distractors are the ones shouting hallelujah for you. The people that who are going to stop you are the ones praising you. Because they cannot stop what they cannot stop. Hallelujah. Right. The Bible says who the Lord has blessed, no man can cause. A cost costless cannot stand. Cannot you stand. have to be in agreement until you get to that place where you are in agreement totally. You are your total being is in, in subject to one voice and one language and one speech. I'm telling you, you can still be uh, 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 withheld. You can still be delayed. But when you get to that place, oh come on, somebody's going to be angry today. Say enough of no. mediocre, enough of graft hopper mm -hmm. mentality. It's time to begin to think like God. Hallelujah. It's time to begin to act like God. Yes. It's time to begin to do like God. It's time to begin to move like God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has created me in his image and likeness, I cannot be anything but God. If God has made me in his own image, yes. I cannot be the devil, neither should I be the earth. Amen. I will be God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, when God created man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible said, God said, let us. God was in agreement with himself. He was in agreement with his spirit, with his word, which is Jesus Christ. He was in agreement with the angels even. He said, let us make man. Let us. God will not even create man by himself. This is how important you are. This is how, how, how great you have been to God. You, this is how, how, how sophisticated it is for God to have formed man. The Bible says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Are you dominating? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you dominating? 
And God created them in verse 28. God blessed them. That means you are blessed. Never you let somebody tell you otherwise. Never you think otherwise. Because many times we are the ones that are holding ourselves back. So what we are thinking about ourselves, the devil will help us to amplify it. So the Bible says, as a man thinketh, in, in, in the Proverbs 20, 23, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when you begin to think that you are not worthy, you begin to think you cannot do it, you begin to think you cannot stand, you begin to think you are not qualified, the devil says, yes, you can't qualify. Mm -hmm. And everything, the galaxy will say you are not qualified. The earth will say, yes, you are not qualified. Because you are the one that gives birth to it. And what no ever man sow it, that he reaped it. Even our thoughts are seeds. When you stink of things, you are sowing seed into yourself. That's why the Bible says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Casting down imaginations, things that you imagine. There are seeds you are sowing. As you sow them and sow them and sow them in your life. Many times we sow them in our environment. You say, this place is so bad. This place is so hard. This place is so tough. And before you know it, that place will become hard and tough for you because you have sown that seed. But as a man taketh in his heart, so is he. And the Bible, the Bible says, God taught. God said, let us make man in our image. So if I'm going to create somebody, I'm going to create a man that looks like me. I'm going to create another God on earth. And God began to form man. And God created man. And it was with it. God said, bless them. The Bible says, and God bless them. That means you are blessed. God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Oh, come on. I'm fruitful. I want you to say it to yourself, whatever you are. If you are fruitful, haha, I am multiply. I have multiplied. I am replenishing. I'm subduing the enemy, subduing my environment, and I'm dominating everything around me. Because that is the five creative ability that God gave to man. And man has it up to date. But because of the, 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 the things that we have created in ourselves, because we are gods, whatever we say we are, that's what we are. The things that we have said to ourselves that we cannot do, we, we have not been able to do them. Because we say we can't. Oh, come on, from today you shall say, I can. Oh, come on, I say you shall say, I can. There is no more, I can't. I can't, we can't. Oh, because of my color, my race, my gender, because of where I'm coming from, because of my resources, because of whatever. It doesn't matter. When God created the heavens and the earth, there was no resources then. God has to create them. That's why the Bible said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Then thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make your ways prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. So, prosperity is in the book of the law. But you have to meditate on it day and night. God did not say, I will make you prosperous. Many times people are waiting for God. You have prayed and fasted. You say, God, when shall I be successful? God said, thou shalt make thy ways. When your mentality change, your activity will change. When you begin to change the way you look at things in life, the things that you are looking at will begin to change to favor you. Ba -ba -ba -di -koro -bo -bo. I want you to begin to look at a dead place, dry place, and say that is a successful place. Mm -hmm. Look at the place that nothing is coming out from. Say something good is coming out from here. Because as you say it, you are creating those things. You are sowing it into the atmosphere. You are sowing it into the ground. These men looked at themselves. They said, we can be like God. We can build a tower from here to the heavenlies. And say, let us burn brick and let us make a house. A tower that will reach to the heavenlies. And they didn't just stop by saying it. They began to do something about it. And as they began to do something about it, those things began to happen. Baba ba likorobo shakara baba ba lima ga santa na baba yekere ba shikorobo bo libra ga santa na mama mama yakanda na baba and they began to build and the things began to come to together as they build they began to come together as they build they began to come together in the name of Jesus and the, before you know it, the tower was getting to the cloud the towers were getting to the cloud and God looked and saw and said what what is going on I'm going to go and see for myself. Probably the angels have seen the tower coming to the heavens, and the tower was entering into the sky. And the, heaven, the, the angels came to God and said, We saw a tower. God said, What? Who is building that tower? He said, Man. God said, Let me go and see. And God saw, God was threatened for the first time. And the Bible said, No, 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 these people have one speech, they have one language. Oh, come on, somebody's about to have one speech today. One language in them. Oh, because when you are one in yourself, there's, there's no way the devil can stop you. I'm going to show you, even in our time, in the modern time, after the death of Christ, men came together. Men prayed in one accord. Men prayed with one voice. They prayed with one speech. They changed the world as we see it today. They changed the way we see the world today. Because when you are in one accord, the devil cannot even stop you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Yekele bashata na baba. Nibo go sikoro bo nikanda na baba shanta na baba. Labaga shikoro bo nikanda na baba shanta na baba. Nibro go shikere ba nikanda na baba shanta na baba. Nikara bashaka na baba nikoro bo zulu. Before you you join yourself with somebody, make sure that you are in agreement to yourself. That, 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 that's the word of wisdom. Before you go and tell somebody, let's do this together. Make sure you have agreed in yourself because sometimes we can be the one stopping ourselves. We can be the one holding that project not to move forward. And we are blaming the devil. We are praying against the devil. The devil said he didn't do anything because you have never been in agreement with yourself. I want you to see the book of Psalm 133. Psalm 133. I'm going to read it. Look at verse 3. He said, it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For the Lord, for there the Lord commanded his blessing. The, the, the Bible says for in unity. For where? For in unity the Lord commands his blessings. When there is unity of purpose, unity of, 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 of vision, when there is unity of, of, of language, when there is unity of any kind of thing, the Bible says the Lord command. The Lord command. So blessings is already placed in unity. So every time there is unity in the church, there is unity in the family, there is unity in the place, the blessings come. Whether you like it or not, God will always release because it is a natural law. The Bible says in unity, the Lord commands his blessings. Did you see it in your Bible? Psalm 133 verse 3. It's in the last stanza of it. It says, but in unity, the Lord commands. I want us to go to somewhere. Ecclesiastes 6 chapter 4. This is one of the wisest men that have lived. So, so more writing in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want you to see something here. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 4. I want you to see verse 9. The Bible says here, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Have you still read where the Bible says one can chase a thousand, but what? Two can chase what? Ten thousand. How can you put that math together? If one can chase a thousand, if you want to do it by the normal way that we do arithmetic of multiplication, one can chase a thousand, that means two can chase what? Two thousand. But when it comes to the things of God, it is different. One can chase a thousand, but two can chase what? Ten thousand. So Solomon is saying here that uh, two are better than one because they have a good reward in their level. They have a good reward. For if they fall, one will leave his companion. But woe unto him who is alone when he falls. Woe unto what? Him who is alone. Loneliness is the worst thing that can happen to a man, a woman, anybody that is alive. If you don't have somebody to lean your shoulder up, somebody to talk to, somebody to, to fall back to in life. The devil sees you as a prey. That's why when you see the animals, they walk in back. When they are moving from one destination to the other, if you have watched animal uh, uh, planet, I've, I used, I've been to safari a couple of times when I was in South Africa. You watch them, they go, the, the buffaloes, they go in back. You see the elephants when they are migrating, they go in back. The zebras, they are going back. The antelopes, they go in back. The, 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 the devourers that are all there, like the hyenas and the and, and the big cats of like tigers and the and the lions, those ones they will try to distract to get one out of the pack. Once one of them gets out of the pack, I don't care how big or small it is, they will surround that one to not to get back to the pack. You see, sometimes the lions will be sitting and waiting for an animal to get and devour, they don't get them. Because all these animals are walking in pack, they walk past the lion. In their numbers, in their hundreds, they are going, going, boo, 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 boo. and the lions are watching them go by until all of them will go. They will not even pick one. Because of unity. How can you attack a group of people like that? So no one say, woe unto you when you are alone. Because when you fall, you are on your own. A lot of people, not because of anything, Something has happened to them, but because they don't have anybody to speak to. Especially in the Western world, where we are. Where everybody's afraid of everybody. People die of nothing. Because they don't have anybody. Where unto you when you are alone? Even God said, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It is not good that the man should be alone. It is not good that the man should be what? Alone. It is not good that your spirit should be alone. Crying in the wilderness alone. It's not good that your soul should be alone. 
It is not good that your body should be alone. Even in the context of a man himself, the three things that makes up the man, the, the, the spirit, the soul, and the body, they cannot be by themselves. They work interwovenly. That's why the soul is the central processing unit where the spirit and the body comes to have conference. That is where decisions are made. Hallelujah. So many times, everything that you do is as a result of the tie breaking. Whether the soul is in agreement with the body and the spirit is weak, or the spirit is in agreement with the, with the, with the body and the soul is weak. That's always what happens in the body. But if you can get the spirit, the soul, and the body to be in agreement, come on, the devil cannot stop you. Their enemies cannot stop you. Nothing can keep you bound by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. What about in the book of Exodus? Time will not permit me to talk about when the children of God went to war. Exodus chapter 17. The Bible said, and Moses held up his hand and Joshua and his people were prevailing in the battle. And every time the hand of Moses comes down, they begin to lose. And some of the servants looked at Moses and saw, wow, this is the secret. And they went and held the hand of Moses. One person on the right hand and the other on the left. And they put stones on the hand not, so that the hand would not go down anymore. So as long as the hand of Moses was lifted up, the battle was for the children of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to find a partner in business, a partner. In anything, God says it's not good that a man should be alone. God was not talking about marriage alone. God was talking about isolation. You can't be in isolation and succeed in life. No man succeeds by himself. It is impossible to make it by yourself. I don't care what you know, but when your ability is added to somebody's ability, it partly pulls whatever you can be able to bring out as a result. Exactly. So you need a, a man. You need a woman. You need somebody. So this year, I begin to think, because there is power in unity. If God commands persons in unity, I should be united with somebody. I should be united with myself first. Because that's what I, where I begin. Begin with yourself. Then you can now find like minds. People in the same kind of field. People that think like you. People that Hallelujah. have the same vision. And begin to join yourself with them. And you see that great things will begin to happen. Somebody is receiving great things this year. Amen. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians chapter 3 to 8 says, We are all one in Christ. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, 24 to 25, He said, Every kingdom that is divided among itself cannot stand. A kingdom that is divided. But I'm going to show you something before we call it a day today. The greatest generation that have lived with the Bible, I'm not talking about the children of. Israel, that God brought signs and wonders and the saw things. I want us to go to the book of Acts chapter 1. I want to show you something there. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus told them something before he, he ascended to the heavens. On the day of ascension, he made a declaration. He spoke to them. He spoke to the church. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by Acts 2, those things began to come. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus told them clearly but you shall receive power. Many of you are receiving power now. Power I'm talking about is knowledge. When you receive power, when you receive knowledge, you have to receive power. Because knowledge is power. When your mind is regenerated, you receive power. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you receive power. When there is a deliverance in you, you have received power. Jesus said you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. So, Jesus told them that the time is coming, you shall receive power. You are gathered here now. There's something you are praying, and but you shall receive power. And the day came. Oh, come on. The power of God came upon them. But before you go to Samaria, you go to Judea, you go to the uttermost part of the earth, make sure that you have conquered your Jerusalem. I don't care where you are, it's your Jerusalem. Wherever you have found yourself today, uh, it's your Jerusalem. But that's not where we are going. I want you to see that power when it came. Acts of, Acts of Apostles chapter 2. The Bible says in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord, back that word, one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, 
And one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave their what? Utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem. Jews, devoted men, and every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. And were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galatians? And how is it that they hear us? Each of our own language in which we were born. Is that the name of the languages? I'm going to stop there. Hallelujah. But the Bible said these men were 120 men gathered after Jesus died and resurrected. 50 days after Jesus Christ, after the after Passover is Pentecost. That has been the feast. The Pentecost is the feast of the unleavened bread. And the Jews celebrate it. It's a big feast. They have to come and drink and there's a lot of food. So the people were planning for Pentecost. We're planning for the feast of Pentecost. And these men were gathered in the upper room. They have been praying for the past 50 days. And suddenly, the prophecy that Jesus gave them in Acts chapter 1 began to happen. The Holy Spirit came upon them like a rushing wind. Somebody is receiving power. Now, as I'm speaking to you, the, the Spirit of God is coming upon you. Because there's a new mindset coming on your life. There's something different that you begin to do now. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, and the Spirit came. Like a rushing mighty wind upon them. And he, he hit, hit them. And many of them came out. The same people that when Jesus died, they, they hid themselves. They were afraid to speak. But today, they came out. Because they were in one accord. Oh, come on. They were in one accord. They had one language. They had one speech. They had oneness in everything. The Bible said the Holy Spirit came upon them. And this young man came out and began to speak, say, Oh, you men of Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and from anywhere, the same Jesus you killed is alive today. I'm telling you, that, that generation, what they did is still what we are still trying to unveil today. That they, they moved from where they are. And God began to bring men in that same one day. 3,000, over 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. And these are men that are coming from Asia, people from Africa, people coming from all over the world. And they carried the word of God. That was the spreading. That's why we call it the Acts of the Apostles. The miracles, signs, and wonders began to take place. Why? Because they were in one accord. At a time when the people did not come together with them because of their, their, their belief system. They formed their own business. They formed their own government. They formed their own economy. They called it, uh, 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 they, they did what we call capital formation. They collected resources from people that have and began to lend to people that did not have. And they build an economy that can be matched with any economy in the world. And the Bible says, and none lack among them. How did all these things happen? From preaching the word of God to becoming business people, owning lands and properties, and begin to own businesses and big businesses. And people began to trade and do other things just because of one language. The Bible says, and they were in one accord. They spoke with one language. And the spirit came upon them. Today I speak unto you. If you can be in one with yourself, with your spirit, with your soul. What happened in the book of Acts? What happened in the Bible? With the, 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 the children of God in the book of Genesis 11. That they came and began to build a tower. You might, your own might not be a tower. It might be a marriage. It might be a business. It might be a, a ministry. It might be a family. Whatever you are about to build. If you can be in one accord. If you can have one language, one speech, you will be able to achieve it by the same unction and power in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory and adoration. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were in one accord and something great happened. Oh, come on, something great is about to happen in your life now. Amen. In life, you don't view, you participate. Many of you that are listening to me today, I don't want you to just listen to me, but I want you to begin to do something about it. Because when you view in life, you become a victim. But when you participate, you become a partaker. I say, you, as you begin to build this year, 
as you begin to put up those projects into action this year, and your spirit and your body is one, you will see how God will begin to multiply you. Your sense of value will determine your, 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 your flow of virtue. The way you value things that comes to you. You will see how those things start to bring. That's why I tell you, when you change the way you look at the thing, the things that you are looking at will begin to change for your favor. I said, this is your year. You must have unity in yourself. There is power in unity. That's the word of God for us today. There is power in unity. There is power in unity. Can you stand on your feet? We're going to pray right now. As I pray unto you today, as you begin to yield unto the will of God, by the unction and the power in the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak unto your businesses, I speak unto your mind, from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot, everything that has troubled you, you shall trouble them. Because your spirit is one, your voice and your soul is one. And your body is in one accord with your spirit. From today henceforth, whatsoever you lay your hand upon to do, you shall prosper in them. By the same unction and power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, everything that is dead in you shall come back alive. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, I speak unto your businesses. I speak unto your marriage. I speak unto your health. I say wherever you find yourself that land will begin to bless you because the spirit of God is upon your life he say, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you that you shall become witness many of you will begin to witness for God because of your success you shall witness for God because of your healing you shall witness for God the things that the Lord is doing in your life is going to be what will bring a witness because the Bible says now faith is a soul Sense of things that we hope for and the evidence of things that we cannot see. The evidence that God have that God has blessed you is because you are still poor. Because the poverty is the evidence of that there's no blessed. If you are not poor, there's no need for you to be blessed. That's the evidence. The evidence that God is going to heal you in that illness or sickness is because you are still sick in the body. And as I speak unto you now, let the power of God touch you, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give you all the glory and adoration. Let the Lord heal your finances. Heal your heart. Heal your resources. Heal your body. Heal your ministry. Oh, this is the house of restoration. The Lord shall restore you. Every year that the palmers and the canker worms have eaten up in your life. Receive restoration. Restore you in your health. Restore you in your finances. Restore you in your marriage. Restore you. I say receive it now. The Lord shall renew you, refresh you, and restore you. We thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We give you all the glory and adoration. We worship you. Have your way, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I will see you next week again. Every time is Sunday, is the word of God. Amen. Amen.